Hi, this is Brian Wilson with BFW Classroom, and today I wanted to talk to you about how to use art created by artificial intelligence, known as Midjourney, and then creating a logo for your social media or your web pages. So if you didn't know, Midjourney is actually an online artificial intelligence program that uses the Discord app to let you log in and generate images based on text injections using several different prompts. Here you can see the background that I use inside the picture we're going to use today. Now, one of the cool ideas that you can use with this is by taking a photograph or a picture you already have, putting it into the Discord app, which is the language builder for Midjourney, and then asking it to re-render or redraw the picture using different text that you put into your prompt. So, you can see I took a picture of myself and then asked it to generate this other profile picture and did this. It did take a couple of tries, but once you have enough training and practice, you'll be able to figure out how to make your own. Now you're going to open Adobe Express and begin building a logo like you would do normally. So here I have a couple of different layers. The top one is actually the words. Below that is the actual background piece that I developed inside of uh, Midjourney. You can see it turned on to a normal instead of the multiply. Uh, this is that layering effect. And then underneath that, you have a, um, another polygon that I've created. So if you look closely, you'll see if you slide the one layer to the side, it's actually layering down on top of that white space and blending through as well as with the blue edging. Wherever there's black on the actual background, it won't show through because that's how the layering process works. Sometimes you have to zoom in to be able to grab the edges if you use a full piece in the square. Now, the other part that you have here is actually the picture on the top, or excuse me, you have the coloring change. You can do this however you want to. You can keep it to the original. I like to keep the colors based on the theme of my logos that I'm currently using with this cyan and sort of navy, dark navy off. Now, to make sure everything else is lined up and to show you what I've done, I take this one picture slide it off to the side and now you can see that I have wording on top so that's my name and my title and then below that I have a circle that is going to be sort of a ring to create a block a color block between the picture profile or the profile picture I should say and the background uh, this is to help your eye adjust between the two and so that way it creates sort of a faux depth kind of porthole right there in the middle with a little ring around the uh, the the profile before you get to the actual ring with the wording. Now to create the wording in this format, what you have to do is take what you're going to type, create one blank line, a couple of spaces, begin to type the entire thing, then go to the end, hit enter again, and create another line with blank spaces at the end of it. So it ends up emptying out that spot at the bottom there that you can see. It's, it's a nice little thing to kind of create flex in between the wording. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but that's what I do. Uh, you can also move around the shadowing because as you have the circle ring, the shadow will be different spots underneath the words. So some will be below and some will be above or towards the center of the circle, I should say. Um, you might want to change this based on the actual coloring of your background piece if the lighting is different. Last thing you do is slide your background piece back over top of your polygon and then you go ahead and hit download up at the top and click transparent. Here you can see I added the finished product back onto another background to give it a little bit more depth when you have some of those square pieces for profiles. Again, this is Brian Wilson. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button or check out one of my other tutorials listed above. Hope you enjoyed and learned something new.